Are you looking for ways to decrease your grocery bill at the first of 2024? Are you tired of the high prices at the checkout counter? Well, if you are, I hope you'll stay tuned and consider joining the Three Rivers Challenge. Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kim and I am so glad to have you and also a big welcome to all my faithful returning subscribers. So as I mentioned in the brief intro, it is almost time to start what YouTubers refer to as the Three Rivers Challenge. So Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead actually started this challenge I think about five years ago on YouTube, I've been participating for the last three years, although sometimes I've called it a no spend January, but it is a great way if you're feeling the stress and the strain at the grocery checkout line, and aren't we all, if you've spent a little more through the holiday season and you're looking for ways to cut back on your grocery bill, I think this challenge is for you. So let me tell you a little bit about the challenge that I do have some talking notes, guys. So if you see me looking down, that's why. <laughs> Jessica actually does the challenge for two months. Historically, I've only known it for a month. This year, I am gonna try to go the full two months. And I will leave a link to her channel in the description box below. She actually shares every meal that she makes utilizing her pantry supplies week by week by week through the challenge and let me tell you this is a family of 10 and Jessica is so creative in finding ways to really make every bit of what she has on hand counts now she is a homesteader she does have a garden she has a freeze dryer she's a canner as well as you know food preserver and they also grow and harvest their own animals which is something that i don't do but i have a plan for that so why would you do a challenge i mean obviously to save money and let me just say this i have watched and it's going to sound critical and i don't mean it that way everyone has to do what makes sense for them and their family but i have watched people go stock up so that they spend every bit of money prior to the challenge they would have spent during the challenge and the actual purpose of this challenge is to use up food that you've preserved over the last grow season in preparation for emptying those jars so we can refill them in the 2024 growing season so it's a good way to be a good steward of your food to rotate your food if you are not a person who has um, I'll say a deep store of food or you don't preserve food. This may not make as much sense to you, but I still have a couple ideas, even if you're not going to wholesale, not go to the grocery for two months, right? Another reason for me that I really like to do it, I love having my pantry shelves full, don't get me wrong, but there is a shelf life, whether it's in the freezer, freeze dryer, dehydrator, fresh, canned, what, whatever the case may be, there is a peak freshness of food and I want to keep that food rotated. So while I spend a big portion of my summer and fall stocking up, stocking those shelves, I do that so that during the winter months when it is horrible in Ohio and where I happen to live, we get a lot, a lot, a lot of ice. We also get snow, but we seem to get I live near the I-70 corridor, which goes east and west across the state. I also hate grocery shopping, but that's kind of beside the point. It keeps me from having to go out in inclement weather because I'm absolutely out of something. It does help me save money. It also, guys, helps me to plan for next year. So I'm going to do a very brief, a very brief tour of what my resources are, talk about the rules, and the rules are there are no rules, so you make your own, but what I'm going to do. Um, but it's gonna help me plan for next year's garden. So I have a bigger garden space for 2024, and I wanna make sure 
that if I have excess still on my shelf, like maybe tomatoes, <laughs> just saying, some, some forms of tomatoes, I may change what I plan to grow for 2024. So it's all part of the continual process for planning, planting, harvesting, and preserving. Another thing that I've really noticed, and I noticed this last year, pardon me, so remarkably, is your waste goes way down, not just food waste, but your packaging waste, because you're generally utilizing things that are in reusable containers. So if it's a canning jar, you wash it, you reuse it. If it's a silicone freezer bag, you wash it, you reuse it. So my trash burden went way down. I pay the same whether I have a lot or a little, but still, it's nice to know there's that added benefit of not filling up the landfill. So the rules, again, are make your own rules. So everyone's situation is different. My situation this year is a little bit different in that the cat must be outside the door or I have a ghost, one of the two. I thought I heard his little collar shake. Sorry about that. Um, I am not going to be making all the sweets and treats and things that I used to make since discovering that I have early diabetes. That is no longer a need. So what I'm going to need to make sure I have enough on hand are more savory and healthy food choices, which is a good thing, but I won't need to make sure I have chocolate chips and sugar and some of those type things. So you do have to look at what makes the most sense for your family. Maybe you have littles, you have to be able to access fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, fresh dairy. Um, I have enough canned and some fresh that that isn't going to be as big of a problem, but I do have a couple suggestions for you. If you're wondering, how am I going to make it through without buying fixings for salad, for example? So how do I go about planning and how do I go about utilizing my food stores for this pantry challenge? And guys, obviously I have enough to do two months. I could probably actually do longer, but we'll see how it goes. So the very first thing I'm going to be using, obviously, is anything fresh. So I still have pumpkins. I still have butternut squash. This is just a, um, a sunflower that I'm letting dry out for seeds for growing for next year. So anything in my refrigerator would be next. So I will be using that up um, I do have some apples, I have some citrus fruit, some things like that. Guys, I'm so sorry. Franklin! For those of you who are new, I have a cat and I don't like him in here because he sheds and I just clean the pantry. So I did just clean my pantry and do a reorganization and an inventory too. So fresh goes first. Then the second thing that I like to go to is my freezer. So I have some vegetables, some fruits. I definitely have my proteins in there and then I have dairy as well. So out of everything next to fresh, that would be the thing that has the shortest shelf life or the less, the shortest freshness cycle. So I don't want my meat, in other words, to get freezer burnt. And I do have a deep freeze. I am going to give you just a brief show of what that looks like. Believe me, it's packed full. We should be in very good shape. So after I've looked at my fresh and I'm planning on using regularly from my freezer, the next thing I will go to are canned goods. So probably home canned first, depending on best by date. Maybe then I have some store purchase things as well. There are a few things I do purchase. I don't make everything from scratch and I certainly don't grow everything I eat although I'm trying to grow more and more. So that will be my next. I like to use my canned goods within two years. I feel like beyond two years, even though the food is still good if it's sealed, you do lose some nutritional value and you lose something kind of like in the texture and sometimes even in the taste, sometimes not. But I try to cycle through on the regular and I also do go check all of my canning jars. I try to do it once a quarter, but at least twice a year I go through all my canning jars 
because occasionally you will have a seal failure and you want to get that, of course, out of your pantry. The last item that I will use would be a freeze dried item. So it is going to have the longest shelf life. So let me just show you a few examples, if I might, of some different items. Um, well, that's probably not. Okay, here's a good one. And then let me just grab this one. Don't fall over. So this expired 523. Is it still good? They're um, Happy Harvest Mushrooms in a non-BPA can. They're absolutely still good. How did I end up with them? I probably got them for a recipe and changed my mind. So I will be looking. I do use a Sharpie on the top of all of my purchased foods. And then I will look at my home canned goods. Now I'm showing you this because this one is a little bit over two years and it is a sugar-free maple syrup sweetened applesauce. And the reason I ended up with so much of this was because my beloved mommy absolutely adored my homemade applesauce. And then one day she's like, I made like a humongous, like a quadruple batch. She's like, yeah, I don't want it anymore. But you know what I can use that maple applesauce for? You could use it for straight up eating, but one really good use is you can substitute it for oil in a recipe. I actually prefer, like if I'm going to make a brownie, I prefer it with maple applesauce, but you could also use it for a quote unquote sweet bread. Um, there's another use for it. Wait for, oh, you can substitute it for eggs too. But let me share this with you. So my chickens, I have four chickens. And when they're laying a plenty in the summer, I happen to have a freeze dryer, so I freeze dry the eggs. One tablespoon of the powder with one tablespoon of water equals one egg. So I won't lack for if I need to use eggs in a recipe, if I want to make a breakfast casserole type thing and I don't have enough fresh eggs, of course I will use my fresh eggs when I can. I have uh, probably about a gallon and a half altogether of these freeze dried eggs. They are vacuum sealed, they're perfectly good and they will stay good for many years. In addition, guys, I'm sorry to keep getting up and getting down and you know, moving around. I do have other things that are freeze dry that I do want to start working through because my shelves are crowded, so I will be using some of it. Things like freeze dried zucchini. This can bulk up a soup, add some nutrition, good in a stir fry as well. I have some freeze dried strawberries. You can use these for snacking. So as you go into the pantry challenge, I encourage you don't forget about having snacks or things that your family very much enjoys. One of the things that I've been dealing with is I have a new eating plan where I am supposed to eat a small amount of protein, even if it's just like a little nut butter or something every four hours. So I have to have things like uh, nut butters on hand or you know, maybe even a way to do an egg scramble for breakfast and put some veg in it. So my freeze dried items are a very important part of my pantry, but will stay freshest longest. In addition, and y'all, I'm sorry to keep getting up and down. I just couldn't figure out an easy way to do it without making you all dizzy. I have a lot of grains, so grains and beans. So I have rice, I have barley, I have great northern beans, I have pinto beans, I have some home freeze-dried uh, just add water meals. This happens to be a chicken and noodle meal. Um, if we're in a grid down situation, even though I do have a generator, if I'm not wanting to utilize a lot of electricity at that particular time, because perhaps my furnace is running or I'm running the washing machine, 
you can't overload your generator. It's nice to have things where I can just heat water and re-eat it. I keep a very good stock, y'all, of, let me scooch you around here, of all types of flowers and grains. So I have hard red, soft white. I have um, whole corn I can grind into cornmeal as well as cornmeal. I do have some pre-ground bread flour, some pre-ground AP flour. I have things like popcorn for, for a snack or a treat. Lots of seeds and nuts. Uh, and even some dried fruits like dried cranberries. And I just vacuum seal them, guys. They stay fresh. This room is colder than the rest of the house and it's dark. In addition, I have some dried milk dried buttermilk, some canned evaporated milk. So if you're worried about dairy, there are alternatives to having to go to the store and just buy a gallon of milk all of the time. I keep a large supply of almonds. I do have a way I can make my own almond milk. And while it is not vitamin A and D enriched like you will find in the store, I feel I get enough nutrition from most of my food and no more milk than I would need, that it is a good option to, to not have to go to the store. Let me slide you back a little bit more. And y'all may think, oh my, where's your food hoarder? I'm really not, guys. This is the best stocked I will be, and it will be much depleted as the winter goes on. Even when I'm not doing the pantry challenge, my goal when I meal prep is always to see if I can use something that I've home canned or that is in my freezer first if I don't have fresh on hand. Uh, over here, I have a lot of my home dried herbs. So things like sage, or this is basil, <laughs> rosemary. I have all kinds of herbs that I grow and I save. I have extra, um, some convenience items. So things like my crackers, because I'm horrible hand to make crackers. I have been also buying, um, these are the great value one gallon size iced tea bags because I don't drink soda. So I have one, two, Three of those ahead, and each one of those lasts me just over a month, so I'm good on that. I have some artificial sweetener because of my diabetes. I have all the vinegars, some lemon juice, in case there is something like all those tomatoes I still have in my freezer that I want to can during the winter because I do can year-round. Up top, which you can't really see, but they're in these containers, are a lot of my home cleaning products and I have some health and beauty aids, dishwasher tabs, extra vitamins, hand sanitizer. So as I find items on sale, I try to stock up and I do observe the FIFO, the first in, first out. So like I said, whoopsie. <laughs> This is probably the deepest my pantry has ever been, kind of from a twofold standpoint. One is I had a banner growing year, so I canned a lot more. So you'll see a lot of my home canned goods down here. And then I will take you and show you my other two. Guys, I'm sorry about the hiccups. Y'all just have to deal with that. <laughs> and also, I am the drop coordinator for Azure Standard. So now that I have gamma buckets, I have stocked up a little more on some grains and flowers that I might not have simply because I have credit that can be used not only for my chicken feed, which is always my first go, but for things like spices, grains, extracts, things like that. So Azure has really helped me out a lot this year as well. So how do you how, how how do you make this last for 2 months? I know it looks like a lot of food, but how do you put it together to make a sensible and well-balanced meal plan? To me, that's the biggest part of the challenge. Um you may have your favorite foods that you run out of first <laughs> and 
if you're not cooking from scratch or maybe you'll run out of the ingredients to do it. Let's just say pizza. You run out of pizza sauce. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to have to come up with some creative menus that you enjoy. So a few ideas for you. I will probably be cooking out of this. I have only cooked once out of it. Um, this is the Hard Times Cookbook with Back to Basics Drip. Yeah, Great Depression Cooking by Anna Patterson. And guys, this has all kinds of really simple recipes that were common when food rationing was in vogue. So things like eggless cakes and, um, oh gosh, lots of soups. And we're going to talk about soups here in just a minute. Um, all kinds of ways to stretch your food budget. So you might want to consider, and I can leave a link to this one, guys. This one is still available. Another thing, I happen to have quite a few apples on hand, and they're still edible, but they're kind of shriveledy, so they're not like as good for fresh eating, better for cooking. Well, I do have an apple cookbook. So this has 125 recipes, um, some sweet, some savory. Um, you know, for an example, a chicken with an apple stuffing so that you're not wasting fresh food and you get some variety and still get some fruits and vegetables in your diet. No cookbook reveal. <laughs> I can link both of those. Would be complete, y'all, without me showing you some vintage cookbooks, right? And I know you're seeing this on Throwback Thursday, so here's my nod to Throwback Thursday. Better Homes and Gardens put out these little cookbooks through um, late 50s, all through the 60s, 70s, and there's even some 80s ones. Now, this is a 1971 Good Food on a Budget cookbook. So consider pulling out some of these type resources that you might have on hand. Another idea, the casserole cookbook. And I have cooked out of this as well. Let me tell you, some of these are a little different though, y'all. Let me tell you that. Um, and I know you probably just, oh, this is a 1961, so the year I was born. So it's a 62-year-old book, right? You might have just heard a, a canning lid pink. It's it's coming, I stacked some things underneath here and it must have popped a lid. It's not something unsealing. Thank the Lord. Another good idea, if you go to allrecipes.com, let's say you have a whole bunch of carrots and you're like, these carrots are going to go bad if I don't use them. How, you know, other than carrot cake, what can I make? You can go to all recipes, type in carrots, and it will give you a bunch of different recipes, sweet, savory, main dish, side dish, desserts with that ingredient. So use those type of resources. This is the time of the year that I probably stretch myself the most in cooking new recipes. And some of them become new family favorites, right? Because it's something that I had on hand that needed to be used up. Maybe at the time I bought it, I, I bought it for a recipe like those mushrooms. I'm going to have to figure out something to do with those because I don't really like canned mushrooms very much. So why I bought them, I don't know. Maybe to make cream of mushroom soup. Could be. All right. So... It is very important that you meal plan. Now, I am the world's worst on meal planning. <laughs> Let me just get that out there. But I won't be bringing you every single day what I cooked, but I will be bringing you some ideas and showing you how I'm using up some of my overage, some of my bounty from summer as well. I think the final word on what do I make one really good thing to make, guys, is soups. I happen to love soup. If you live in a colder climate like I do, it's perfect time of the year to have all the soup. And just something to think about, guys. And this is something that Jessica talks about, so I can't claim this as my original idea, all right? So these are some of my homegrown home canned green beans which are not going to last the whole winter because <laughs> I might have hit them pretty hard already. They are canned in water, but if you notice, the water has a bit of a color to it. Well, the reason the water has color to it is because they were pressure canned. So some of the nutrition from the beans has made, if you will, bean broth or a vegetable broth. When you are utilizing these type things, 
don't throw away your broth. You can put this into a soup. I save like all my onion skins and things like that in the freezer to make onion broth with. So being more mindful of using the substance in its entirety not only saves you money, it can boost your nutrition as well. Now, one of the things that Jessica mentioned that I thought was a really good point is the very first year, and she's been doing her own version of the pantry challenge for like 10 years, she said. She ran out of fats and oils, and her family has, she's gluten-free, and her son has an anaphylactic dairy allergy, as well as I think a peanut allergy as well. So she ran out of oils and it made it difficult for her to make, you know, she's also feeding eight children to make everything that she needed to. She didn't have eight children then, but she does now. So it is okay to take stock and to take inventory of what you have. What I wanna encourage you not to do is go to the store and just buy everything you think you're gonna need for the next 30 to 60 days because you're not gonna save any money. Your stores are not gonna go down. You might use some, but you've already restocked. So it doesn't make sense to just wholesale grocery shop. Just a minute, Frank Frank. Y'all want cat? He's really cute. Yeah, he is very, very cute. Um, let let me grab the kitty here for just a second so he can say hello because that's what he wants. So this is Mr. Hank Panky Frankie. <laughs> so you want to say hello to the peoples? He said, no, I want to get down and I want to dig in all this stuff because this is where mommy keeps the kitty foods. <laughs> and he knows that. Frankie is, tw you, you, get, you get fat. Yeah, like your mom, mom. He's 12. He is a seal point Himalayan. I, he is declawed in the front, but not in the back. He's an indoor only kitty. I love Himalayans because they're very master oriented. So they, they pick their person. Okay, here we go. Yep, you go play. They also shed a tremendous amount. Don't let anybody tell you they don't shed. Um, some people say he looks like a rag doll, but his paper said he was a seal point Himalayan. He was the run of the litter and he's really, really big now. <laughs> so anyway, you see all the hair flying by? I certainly do. So how do you get prepared? Well, first of all, I want to say make your own rules and don't let anyone pressure you that you're not doing it right. If you go to the grocery at all, if you have to buy, you know, fresh things. First thing to do is take an inventory. Realistically, how much food do you have on hand? What would you like to see used during this time period and not replenished until summer gardening season or if you buy from the farmer's market or however you stock your own pantry? If you have special dietary needs, maybe you must have fresh fruits and vegetables, etc. Maybe you're gluten-free um, and you don't have enough gluten-free product on hand. Whatever the case may be, you have to decide for you what makes sense. I think this is just a good way to be mindful and a good steward of the food supplies that you have. And also save yourself a little bit of money and gain some creativity and maybe some cooking skills. <sighs> Make sure not only that you have cooking oil, probably the one thing that I will have to do a little bit of a stock up on, not a lot. There's a few things I'm out of in the spice arena. So since I am on a low calorie, low fat, uh, low sugar or no sugar diet, I want my food to still have flavor. So there's a few things I've run out of, not the ones I showed you, but things I don't grow like ginger, I happen to be out of. So make sure you have salt and pepper and the spices that you commonly use and you know the basic cooking fats that you are going to need to get through the process. If, <laughs> sorry, sometimes my handwriting y'all, if you're thinking there is no way I can go without a big green salad, I have a couple suggestions for that. So you can do sprouts y'all. And I have done sprouts on this channel before. I keep a bucket. Let me grab it. 
Let's see if I can pull it out. I have my nine good gamma lids. Okay. A little crash and bang. I'm all right. <laughs> I didn't want to throw away my lids when I went <laughs> like, even Frankie's like, I'm out of here, mommy. But the jars with the mesh on the top and you simply rinse the seeds and they sprout. I have a couple methods of doing it. I have, oh Lordy. Well, I had, um, these are radish seeds, um, pea seeds. So the sprouts can make a great substitute y'all for um, like lettuce on a sandwich or even on a taco. Something that I learned, and I learned it the hard way, so I always like to mention it. If you have an inflammatory autoimmune disease, please don't eat alfalfa sprouts without checking with your health care professional. Because in folks that have systemic lupus, like I have, it will cause you to have, it, it can cause you, let me say that, to have a lupus flare. So let me just set this aside. Another suggestion, and I'll show it to you in a minute, I have Aero Garden. I actually have two of them. I have the big farm, and then I have the smaller one that I use as part of my seed starting. It is so nice because I saved some seed and such so that I could actually grow a lettuce palooza. <laughs> so when I'm really jonesing for a salad, I can do some sprouts. I can um, have some, maybe some apples or some dried cranberries or whatever I happen to have on hand. Uh, maybe some frozen vegetables that I just steam and put in the salad, some hard boiled eggs, and that will satisfy that urge for fresh vegetables. So don't forget about ways you have to grow things indoors. And I did also mention plan snacks. So I need to plan protein snacks. So I've kind of taken stock of my nuts and seeds, my nut butters, those type of things. So what are my rules? Well, my rules may be a little different than your rules. I am not going to prohibit myself if there's something I really, really, really need. Like if I absolutely have to have some cow's milk and I can't use powdered milk or canned milk or I'm out of that. I'm going to allow myself that for a recipe. I don't just straight up drink cow's milk. I'm going to try to make do with what I have and almond milk. I also get a monthly credit for being the drop coordinator at Azure. I am going to allow myself, if I need something, to utilize that Azure credit, because it doesn't cost me anything, towards something that I may have forgotten about that I need. And I would just say, guys, don't beat yourself up. If you are just being more mindful of how you're spending money, how you're using your resources, um, you're winning, right? So that's why I love this challenge because there's no rules. So let's go look at a couple other things that I have to work through and then we'll close out for the day. Now, some of you may be wondering why do you have two refrigerators? Well, one, because this is the coolest refrigerator anybody could ever want, right? Both of my refrigerators are small. My main refrigerator in the kitchen is tiny, tiny. And the reason for that is I am limited as to the height of the refrigerator based on the cabinet configuration. So without taking off all the trim and redoing the cabinets, I'm stuck with a short refrigerator. However, I keep this one pretty well loaded. So this has, um, you know, overload of dairy, some pickles, some hot sauce, some nut butters I've made, all of my Christmas goodies, cheese, and then fruits and such down at the bottom. And I don't keep anything in the freezer. It's teeny weeny. And this shelf is the quick chiller. So um, this has been a real blessing to me to not have to play Jenga every time I need to get in the refrigerator. So in case you're wondering, why do you have two refrigerators? That is why. All right, let's kind of start maybe over here first. And you all are probably gonna go, oh my goodness. <laughs> because yes, there is food behind the chair as well. So up top, I have a lot of tomato products, some soup mixes, canned tomatoes, 
the bottom is all dehydrated um, herbs that I did with the dehydrator versus the uh, freeze dryer. On the other side, guys, I fully admit this, the first two shelves are all jams and jellies. <laughs> My favorite thing to make. Have I made excessive amounts? Why, yes, yes I have. Is it your birthday? Let me present you with some jelly. Oh, it's your anniversary? Let me give you some jelly. You're moving into a new home. Here's some jelly for a harsh housewarming gift. So, because it is sugar sweetened, um, this will largely be gifted. I, I don't know what else to say. You know, I did this at a time mostly for my mother. My mom is no longer with us and I can't eat all the sugar. Uh, down below, I have a lot of veg and um, things like pre-made soups. So convenient. Over here, I have a second pantry. So these are just plain tomatoes. These are more uh, condiments, jalapenos, banana peppers, hot peppers, pickle relish, things like that. Uh, potatoes and beans are primarily what's on the bottom. This side, guys, is all just fruit items. And then, of course, my big canisters. So while, yes, I have, and there's almonds there. While I do have two cabinets full of home-preserved items, there's not as much in there as you might think. And I consider it a successful week when I have, you know, a couple rows of emptied canning jars in my dishwasher. So the last place I want to show you, I mean, of course I have a spice drawer and I have um, smaller containers of like, you know, flour and baking powder and baking soda and salt and things like that stored in various places in my ever so tiny kitchen. But let's go out and take a peek at the freezer. Now, no judgment zone, guys. All right, here we go. I almost forgot to show you this, so I'm gonna sneak this in between a couple clips. So this is my Arrow Garden 24 XL. As you see, it's you can hear it humming, the motors are running. I'm actually going to go ahead and unplug it because you fill the bottom up with water. And then mine came with seed pod kits. So I actually have two salad green seed pod kits. So I will be able to grow um, pretty much as much salad as I will need to eat because this makes many, many servings over the next couple months. I also purchased the seed starting system um, on clearance <laughs> or on sale, I'll say, where you take this part off and then you have the little plugs and pods to start your seeds. So that's how I will be starting everything in the spring. These are the lights. They adjust up and down for growth. I can't say enough good about the Arrow Garden. So whether you have a small one or a large one, I really like the large one. I put it in my dining room, probably not the the prettiest place to have it, but I really like having this system and having the ability, you can grow flowers, you can grow your own seeds, you can grow in the uh, farm version. It does have like these bungee cords that go across. You can actually grow some tomatoes. There are a lot of different things that you can grow using the Aero Garden system. All right, y'all. <laughs> My freezer is very, very full. So I have fruit and veggies and more veggies. I have some pork, uh, beef, chicken, some seafood with some dairy thrown in. In the door, I have freezer jam, butter, SAF yeast, more butter, milk, coffee, half and half, some cream cheese, a random Texas toast. <laughs> and then in the bottom are goat's milk cubes for my soap making business, and tomatoes. Now y'all may be saying, my word, Kim, that's a lot of food. And I have to agree with you, it is a lot of food. Again, I preserved more food this year than I have ever in years past. It has reminded me to be very mindful as I'm planting, not to overplant. 
27 tomato plants like I did last year and to try some different fruits and vegetables. So here's the way I look at it. I do keep it inventory. I keep it rotated. There's nothing that I have right now in danger of spoilage or not being usable. So perhaps I will do the no grocery January, February, but continue really being dedicated through March, April, May, and then in June, I'll be able to start harvesting things like broccoli and cabbage and maybe some other early veg, you know, greens and such like that. But I, I recognize, I fully recognize that I need to decrease the size of my food store. It isn't hurting anything. I love being able to feed people. I do that on the regular. I love knowing if someone's in need that I could give them you know, a week's worth of groceries without any real sweat. But on an ongoing basis, I really probably don't need to keep this much. So this year, more than ever, the Three Rivers Challenge is really important to me because I do want to decrease my food supply. So drop me a comment below, y'all. Are you going to participate? And again, guys, if you only want to do it for a week, if that's all that makes sense in your food stores, if um, you want to give yourself a $50 a week or so grocery allowance, that's fine. If you want to cut your grocery bill in half, I think just being mindful of the way that we utilize our food resources can really change your outlook. It can encourage you to be more creative and less wasteful with food you have. I'm thankful I have chickens. I don't eat my chickens. <laughs> but I do eat their eggs. So that helps me a lot too. Even though it looks like I have a lot of meat, y'all, I'm not a huge meat eater. So that's gonna be a challenge for me to use up what I do have so that it doesn't get freezer burnt, go to waste, etc. So what's coming up for the rest of the year, guys? We are almost to Christmas. Can you believe it? I do still have a couple of videos I hope to do. I have to say, I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to be doing based on some some family and get together obligations. So it might be as big of a surprise to you as it is to me. I do have some cooking I still want to do before the end of the year. I may be sharing some family photos, that type thing. But we are also not only gonna get ready for the Three Rivers Challenge, I am going to be doing something very different in 2024 for myself and I hope y'all will enjoy this. I have inherited a lot of stuff y'all, like all the stuff, right? And I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed and a lot of the things I held on to out of a sense of obligation, not as a sense of value or desire. There are things I value and I want to keep, but there are many things that uh, my mom was not in agreement with me divesting myself of. So my goal for 2024 is actually to go through every room, every closet, every drawer, every nook, every cranny of this house, do some selling, do some gifting, do some blessing, and do some donating. So if you are in a situation where you're like, I got to get my self-organized for 2024. I think there'll be some content that you'll really, really enjoy. I want to thank you for your time today, y'all. Y'all are so faithful to come and to comment and you leave such sweet comments that you just make my day. We are up to 6,074 subscribers this morning. I am just in awe of how much we've grown and I'm glad to have each and every one of you, whether this is your first visit or you've been here since day one, I'm grateful for both of you. I hope the Lord will bless and keep you. Be healthy, be well, be blessed, and take care until I see you again real soon.